Welcome to the Northview Asks podcast, where we discuss the sticky questions that you, our church family, are asking. Life is messy, and sometimes there are no easy answers, but we hope our conversations will help provide biblical and practical direction, always with the warmth of the gospel. Hey everybody, welcome back. So glad to have you. My name is Joshua, but today I'm not joined by Thalia. She's off and about. I actually have no idea where she is, Uh, but I have some great replacements. Uh, We have Luke Friesen, our youth pastor. Luke, thanks for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. Long time listener to the show, so I'm (laughs) thrilled. Right on. We appreciate your commitment. Uh, And we have Dolly, our missions pastor. Not not the pastor of mission. No, missions. But missions pastor. But for today, we're just the replacement <laughs> right that's, well, that's what you, you said spin. well that's true i said that but i you know i probably shouldn't yeah mm. great to have you guys so uh the question that we're facing today is, is a good one but it's not one that maybe uh we talk about all the time mm-hmm. even though maybe we should talk about it more uh the question that we're, we're gonna uh work through is why is it that that northview as a church is so committed to sending missionaries to mm. being behind missionaries uh and sending out local short-term missions teams in in the in spite of the fact that we actually have quite a lot of people around us just in Abbotsford in British Columbia who don't know Christ. Yeah. Um what is the benefit? What is the good that we're doing by sending missionaries by doing short-term missions? And if you come to Northview for any uh period of time, you'll probably notice that on a given weekend we actually end up praying for missionaries yeah. and praying for those couples and praying for their their work. Uh, this is a real value we have as a church, but this is, there's a legitimate question. Well, what about the people here? What's the value? Uh, but before we get into that question, I want to hear from both you guys, Dolly and Luke. Uh, maybe Dolly, why don't we start with you? Could you just share a little bit of your experience with missions work and how that has become a part of your life? Well, as the missions pastor, I do have a lot of missions under my belt, but I would say the very first short-term missions trip I did was when I was in grade 12. Mm. It's quite a number of years ago. I went to the inner city of Los Angeles uh, in my grade 12 year, and it was a life-changing experience. We can probably unpack that a bit more later, but yeah, that was the beginning. From then, I did three short-term trips in my college years for three summers in a row, went to Kenya, not just for two weeks, the whole summer, Wow! just loved it and kept going back. And it just kept going from there. My heart got stirred for ministry, got involved in ministry, um, actually got my degree in youth ministry, Luke. So like I've (laughs) had, I know, right? So it was great. No, but it really, it really set the trajectory for my life in terms of wanting to serve God in ministry and missions was a huge part of that. And um, later on, lived in Kenya with my husband, and we were youth pastoring there in a big church in Nairobi for a few years. Mm. Um, And then after um, 10 years in Canada, went back to missions in Uganda for um, six, almost seven years. Um, My husband is still serving there, um, coming and going when he can. Um, But yeah, that's so there's a lot of missions that I've done. I have also taken some, I've been a leader of of teams in, in Kenya also taken a team when I was a young adults director from mm. Northview. I took a team to Thailand. Oh, so yeah. um, I do have both experiences of short term and long term. Yeah, so, very cool. And yeah. you have a really unique experience being mm-hmm. having lived over in Africa yeah. and having received teams. Yeah, You're going to be able to, to help us work through this and just the benefits yeah. of it. It's got a really unique perspective. Um, Luke, tell us about your experience. Yeah, so um, I became a Christian at 17 and then went to a Cape and Ray um, right after high school. Um, and I had the privilege of going on two mission trips while at uh, Cape and Ray in England. Mm-hmm. One was uh, to Kenya uh, over spring break. Um, and it was actually a fun fact. I got to meet people who knew Ezra growing no up. No way. One of the guys there, and his name was Harry, and he's like, do you know Ezra? And I'm like, he happens to be <laughs> a pastor at my church. He's like little Ezzy. And I'm like, the stories I imagine, I didn't get to talk to him long, but I imagine there's tons of stories about Ezra growing up that would have been amazing. Fantastic. But yeah, do you have some Dolly? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so got to go there. And that was me participating. And then I led a trip uh, at the end of my Cape Ray, uh for 10 days uh, to uh, Wales. Uh, I was in England, went to mm-hmm. Wales. Mm-hmm. And uh, just helped out the churches there. And it was like, just because I came from Northview, Abbotsford, and to see like a church of 50 people with everyone, mm-hmm. 80 plus, and wow. for them to accept like these 10 
18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Crazy. And just to run youth and to preach. And so I got to preach my second, third and fourth and fifth sermons ever there, which was exciting, but I mean, awful. Um, (laughs) I thought it was a good idea to preach through the whole Bible in one sermon. The the whole story. It's a a good idea. The whole story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great (laughs) idea. But yeah, so I did that. And then uh, I've led three teams to Thailand uh, as being a high school Mm -hmm. pastor here. Very Mm -hmm. cool. Um, all over spring break, two weeks each, and they, they've been amazing. Right. So you've been a participant and you've been a leader. Yep. Right. Yep. So so let's come back to that question. We'll start there, and then we're going to kind of filter our way through kind of the, the benefits and maybe the harm that some short-term mm-hmm. missions can do. I mean, I think maybe a lot of us recognize that there is harm. There can be harm. Um, but that, that question, why is it that we as a church, as Northview, are so committed to praying for our missionaries and backing our missionaries and planting churches. We just sent a couple to Thailand mm-hmm. to plant a church. Yeah. And that mixed with our commitment to short-term missions, even though, you know, in the last couple of years, because of the pandemic, we haven't really been able to no. do those things, but they are really on our hearts. So mm-hmm. why is this something that's so important for us to be a part of, uh, even though there still are a lot of non-Christians in our very yeah. city? Yeah, that's so good. Um, like people, pe- like, I mean, you you know this, like people need Jesus. Mm. Like yeah. they, they need a relationship with him. It doesn't matter um, who you are. Like you, you need faith in Jesus. Uh, like he's the only way mm. uh, to everlasting life. He's the only way to the good life now. And so we, we need that. Um, people, people in Abbotsford, people in BC do have access to the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, and we're here all the time. Hmm. And we should be people who are telling people about Jesus. And I think we'll get to this a little Mm -hmm. bit later. Um, Our hearts should be stirred here. Um, But sometimes that needs a kickstart of seeing that the world is bigger than just Abbotsford. There's, there's people out there who need Jesus, Mm -hmm. not not your neighbors. They need Jesus, your friends, your family, they all need Mm -hmm. Jesus, but there's others. And so I think this actually helps us uh, kickstart our even our, 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 or opens our eyes to see how big this world is um, and to see all different kinds of cultures and people and to see how the gospel can, is bigger than just here in Abbotsford. Because mm. sometimes you think, how could someone over there believe? But yet you go over there and you're like, you believe more than I do. Mm. Your faith is more vibrant than mine. Mm. And it's just so incredible to see like the actual universal church right? and to see how important it is that, it, that the gospel is incredibly diverse yeah. with people. And so I think like we, it's important to go um, because they need Jesus is like the number one, right? Matthew 28, you have the Great Commission. Yeah. Um, and then that's tied all into um, like not just here, like go here, but go everywhere. And sometimes people are called to other places like our good friends, Caleb and Raquel. Mm. And like yeah. Caleb was evidently called to go to Thailand from yeah. a younger age. Totally. So, Very cool. Yeah. Dolly, any thoughts? I would say like... What Luke is saying as well, on top of that, the um, it's an opportunity for people to put into practice what they've been mm, learning, um, what they've been studying, even maybe opportunities to see what giftings they have in mm. terms of serving the Lord, right? Um, and like you're saying too, the the way I our eyes are opened to see what is out there, our eyes are open to see that the church of God is worldwide. Mm. Like we get to mix and meet and see brothers and sisters in Christ in another land. And there's just this automatic connection because we're brothers and sisters. Mm. And I think when we take people to see that and to experience that, it's just, they come back with that knowledge of, hey man, I, I know this place now. I know these people. I can pray into their lives. I can maybe support them somehow, which I'm jumping ahead, I know, right, but right. <laughs> like just all of those things that yeah, can great. play a part of it, right? Mm. And hopefully, you're right, Luke, like why aren't we doing more here? I mean, we should do more here, but sometimes it's the going that stirs us to do more when we come back. Totally, totally. Yeah, I think one of my one of my favorite things about short-term missions or sending missionaries is the testimony of the gospel story that it is in a really practical way, that mm. when we go... We, we know the gospel story is that the, the very son of God from his heavenly home mm-hmm. steps down into a dirty world, uh, into a strange culture, and yet loves and embraces these people yeah. and is kind to them and lo- and cares for them and ends up dying for them, yeah. right? Uh, and now the story of a collective group of young adults or youth or anybody going over to a different nation and stepping out of their home mm-hmm. and going over for the sake of the gospel to, to love and embrace the other 
for our own hearts, like you're saying, like it just kickstarts that sense of, oh, this is the gospel. Yeah. This is what Christ did for me. But I think also the testimony that that gives for the world yeah. is amazing. Like how many people just sitting around their homes when they hear about, oh, there's, you know, 10 youth going over to a missions trip in Uganda would be like, what? Mm. What are you doing with your life? You're going to spend money. You that end up spending money, money right. to go and just build something or teach something or man, what a way, you know, mm. like what a testimony to the world it is that we would give yeah. and be bold to surrender our time. And very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, those texts that you, you raised the Matthew, Matthew 28, 19 acts one, mm-hmm. uh, like this is, this is what Jesus left us with the yeah. great right. commission, yep. go make disciples of all nations, yep. all nations. Yep. And then in acts one, he, he, st- he does this kind of strategic out, right. out where outward movement where he's like in, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria to the ends of the earth. Yes. This is the gospel needs to go everywhere. Right. So this is our commitment to it. So, uh, now when we zoom in on short term missions, mm-hmm. uh, in specific because missionaries uh, are are a long term go in and I'm going to plant myself there plant a church and I'm going to really get in, involved in the culture and the community short term missions though are a bit for their own animal mm. uh, and they have their pros mm-hmm. and I want to start with talking about that but they also have their cons mm-hmm. and and some mm-hmm. people have really gave, given some fair pushback uh, as to why some short term missions have happened um, but let's talk about the pros how is it that short term missions that if I were to pick up and go with a team to, to go to Uganda yeah or to go anywhere to Thailand, wherever, why is this a good thing? What benefits are there to this? Yeah. Uh, I think so many. Um, one, I think, is the the practical, like, if, if you're going uh, for missions and to preach Jesus, like, how can someone believe if they never heard, right? Yeah. Um, you get that in Romans uh, of Paul saying, how can people believe if they're never heard? And how can you hear if you're no one ever preached? And then mm-hmm. how can you preach if no one ever sent? And so like that, there's that very practical movement of like people need to hear. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that that's one is people get to hear the gospel and their lives are changed forever. Mm-hmm. Um, two is the, Dolly touched a bit on this is the actual like discipleship of the people. Um, of their hearts actually being draw drawn closer to who God is and seeing God uh, in kind of like a different way than they're used to in their place. So the actual mm. discipleship that happens is huge. Mm. You take, for me, like especially dealing with high school kids, you take kids away from their safety of their bubble, the school, um, their family, their friends, and you put them in a foreign place with foreign people. It's foreign amazing. Food. For, yeah. oh, foreign food is also a huge, yeah. huge yeah. thing yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, and you, you put them with this and all of their comforts, all of their Mm. pleasures, all of the things that they hold fast to daily is taken away, but they still have Christ and they see it's like, I can live and I can live fruitfully with just having Jesus. Mm. Mm. And you can see the switch going off and you can see as time goes on, the phones start not being out as much and they start having like these conversations and start like Mm. actually like diving into the gospel and seeing how the gospel Mm. changes lives and seeing how Jesus like transforms people. And it's just like this incredible time of this slowly uh, becoming more and more like Christ. Mm. Mm. Um, And it it is one of the coolest discipleship experiences. Um, No other time. Like I I get kids two, two hours a week on Thursday. And then if I hang out with them throughout the week, that's awesome. But here I, we, we would take like 20 some kids and we get, intentional, intentional, um, time with them in showing them who Jesus is, showing them, the what it looks like to always to be on mission. Mm. And so it is incredible, incredibly exciting and formative for these mm. young ones to be like, Hey, what does it actually look like for me to be a Christian? And then right. take that, what they learned at the short term missions and then bring it back. Mm. Mm. Um, so that, and I also think it's a help. Like the, there, there are things that we did that actually helps the, some of the missionaries there. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, we bring money and mm. we bring resources as high school kids. Like they're not the most crafty, but we build, <laughs> build stairs and ramps and all this kind of stuff. And sure, we might have been a hindrance sometimes, mm. but like we actually, I think, did some good. Mm. And um, well, the presence of you being there is an encouragement also. That's huge. Totally. Yeah. And showing like, hey, there's these people in Abbotsford care mm. about the ministry you're doing in Thailand yeah, um, or wherever we go. I remember, sorry to interject, but I remember taking a team to Thailand and just sharing with a group of people um, and saying, you know, our church in Abbotsford, we pray for you regularly. Mm -hmm. 
and the tears that flowed in those wow. people. Because mm-hmm. it's just that, again, that fellowship totally. of believers, right. no matter right. One big where. family. Exactly. Yeah, cool. and, and like, yeah, with that, what Dolly was saying with that fellowship, uh, going up north in Thailand and visiting the Change Life Center mm. and then hearing from pastors who are daily persecuted for mm-hmm. their faith, mm-hmm. just eye-opening for these kids because these kids go to MEI, ACS, or even public school and they're like, I haven't been persecuted once for my faith. Yep. And here's this guy holding up like one less finger because they took it <laughs> uh, for being a Christian. Yeah. Right. And it was like just wild of the faith being like, oh, this is real. Like these are these are real people who are actually being persecuted, mm. but they say it's worth it, mm. and so it's them seeing Jesus just in a clear light mm. of how good He is, and yeah, I think it's so worth it. It's yeah. so good. That's great. So Dolly, from the from the receiving end, because yeah. you've had teams come while yeah. you've been serving over in Uganda, what what has been the benefit for your experience? Well, to have a team, especially if it's from your home church, right. oh, it's mm. just awesome. Cool. Just because you you know your home church is praying for you. Mm-hmm. You know they know that they're there somehow. Not everybody knows, <laughs> but especially a bigger church like Northview. But for them to ha- be on the ground, see with their own eyes, meet the same people you have. So I have people still asking me today, hey, how is so-and-so? How are they doing? Because they had That's a good amazing. interaction. They built a relationship. And then, yeah, just that come on, I can't say it. Camaraderie? Um, yes, that word. <laughs> tough word, tough word. <laughs> of your own members from your church coming and seeing what you're doing and being there and encouraging you and praying with you. Yeah. Um, to add on also what Luke has said too, like I think the hope in somebody going on short, short term is, is to stir the heart that hopefully some of them will do mm. long term. Mm-hmm. So if we put out an ad to say, hey, we're doing a short-term missions trip. We get lots of people signing up that right. they want to come. Right. If I do a call, even like in October, Ezra said, hey, let's do missions in, in the, the missions weekend we had. How many people are knocking on our door saying, sign me up? Right, uh, totally. You know, they, there is something about the experience of going first that mm-hmm. really, yeah. and so that's why yeah. I'm also passionate about it because I, totally. I, in my own life, it has changed the way I see life and ministry. And that's not only just doing ministry as a, as a job, but yeah. like hopefully that resonates in somebody's work in in the industry that they're working in. That they mm. see that as their mission field yeah. too. Yeah, and so. just even a piggyback, like I've I'm in communication with like kids I've taken, yeah. and who are now being like, I think this is for me. Wow, yeah. and which is so cool. I've had numerous kids go wow. back to mm. uh, Thailand and being like, stay there for three four months. Um, like uh, Central Campus, Brittany, Brittany did that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. she went back. Um. And just like walking through people and like, no, that was like really formative. And now I'm thinking like, this is important. And yeah. now how, what's my next steps, Luke? And I'm like, great question. And so we get to talk about that. Yeah. And very cool. So, so, so very beneficial mm. for the faith of those who go yeah. for encouraging the, yeah. the people that were going to the missionaries. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the practical, you kind of touched on this just a little mm. bit there, Luke, but the, the practical stuff that we end up going to do, mm-hmm. one of the one of the pushbacks that some short-term missions trips have gotten is that, well, you go and maybe you go and build a house or you mm. go and build a school. Mm-hmm. Well, you're actually hurting more than you're helping by going and doing those things. Right. Um, has that been your experience? Where, where have been the positive of the actual practical things you do? Um, and maybe have there been, have you noticed those hindrances where you're like, actually, maybe we actually hurt a little bit more than we helped here? I haven't been a part of it per se, but I have heard of where there can be danger in doing some of those if there's no relationship building Mm, in the process because teams will come and do a job and then the team leaves and the people that are left there are like, well, you came and went, but we actually don't even know you. Right. Right. So like there is that relational side that, and I think to do projects like that and to be able to go back and see the ongoing work of what's going on when you do it, um, I think that can be helpful too. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Uh, no, the, Dolly's so right with the relational aspect. So it was really cool. And we would partner with like the Root Center or we go up mm-hmm. north to Chiang Rai. Mm-hmm. And the, if we did any construction or projects, there were all people that were already involved with, uh, mm-hmm. her name's P- Pinoy, her, her ministry, where um, they're already working in the slum communities. And mm-hmm. so they, they either attend her Bible study or whatever, and we would come and pay for materials. And they already have a construction worker, his name was Steve, who would already be building and we'd come and help him. 
or he'd actually sometimes just leave us and we'd be by ourselves. Right. And we're like, we don't know what we're doing. Right. Um, but so in like, we'd, it's already those pre existing relationships mm-hmm. and we're just kind of, um, we're not starting anything. It's kind of like a catalyst, right? Mm-hmm. We're just encouraging them, helping, making things a bit easier for them with money and kind of st- stuff like that. Um, a lot of the times we do like kids camps and stuff like that mm-hmm. um, and going to villages and um, trying to share them Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The, the danger can be when we bring teams or teams go and they come with an attitude of they're the expert. Mm-hmm. And yet the way they do things mm-hmm. on that end is completely different. Right. Um, just a different working materials, different way of doing it. Right. So like it's very important that a team goes with the right attitude of wanting to help right. and using their expertise and not coming in as right. the right. expert. Yeah, the the danger of the savior complex. Yeah, exactly. Right, of I'm mm-hmm. going to come and sort out the problem over here because yeah. I know how to build a house better or I know how to r- right. X, Y, or Z. And that's hopefully on that end too, the receiving end, um, if you have a team that's coming and there is a particular pro- hands-on project, mm-hmm. you're not taking away jobs from other people. Right, mm-hmm. totally. It's something that is going to help the the organization or the mission, yeah. whatever's going on right. and benefit them and not hurt in right. that totally. sense. But yeah. 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 Then I can also see them hurting. I think Dolly could touch more on mm. this. Um, but just the energy that would require for people to host teams. Mm. Like I've heard they're just like, I'm exhausted after mm. two weeks of Abbotsford high school kids. I'm like, I understand <laughs> that's a, it's a long time for you guys to put up with us. Totally. And so I could see the like trying to the cost analysis benefit of like, yeah. is it actually worth it for how much time you put in for what's mm. getting out? And mm. I mean, for the missionary who's living there, they have to decide that for yeah. themselves yeah. because I will always say it's always a benefit for us. So mm. it matters up to you. What yeah. do you think? Yeah. Right. Well, if we come with the attitude too, with um, living on the field, knowing that we're helping them in their journey that also changes how the perception of receiving a team, right? Like mm. if this is going, if what we're doing is going to help that person to grow in their faith, to grow right. in their walk, to p- potentially be a missionary in the future, then we want them to come. But yes, there has to be the right time, the right, like we, I've had teams who have come and they're like, okay, well, give us more work to do. Give us more to, like, we're such a busy culture here. We want to go, go, go. Mm. But a lot of the cultures that you go to, it's a v- slower pace. Right. More relaxed. <laughs> totally. yeah. And so then yeah. we've just had to talk to them and say, no, you know, get to know people, mm. talk, spend time. And I think that's what you were talking about, Luke, as well, is as time goes and people slow down and start having those relationships, they see the importance and the difference and right. it is beneficial. But yeah, yeah, it is definitely a lot of work totally. hosting a team. Totally. <laughs> it's a lot. But it's good. Yeah. It's just, it yeah. is time. I, I, like you need a holiday after they yeah. come. So. <laughs> Yeah. And that relational commitment mm. going with that as the attitude, I'm here to just meet people, connect with people, mm. uh, serve people. That is, that's so stretching. Uh, it is. Because that is not normal for our culture. Um, we're not prone to be the people to jump in to help. Some some of us are, and that's great. Those are some great Christian examples that we have. Mm-hmm. And even non-Christian examples, quite frankly. Um, but to go out and just sit down and say, I'm in this conversation. Yeah for two hours, because that's how long it takes to have a conversation or whatever. Um, you really get dedicating to give your time away. And that's such a great stretch. Um, so there are not just, we, we, we do short-term missions here. Mm-hmm. We will kind of sometimes put some out and, and call some people to be a part of it, but there are other organizations that yeah. do short-term missions. And, uh, there is probably a need for some discernment and some wisdom about, which missions trips would be good to go on and which not? Is there any any practical uh, advice that maybe you guys would give from your own experiences to be able to say and look look at maybe an itinerary or the goal of a short term missions and say I don't know if this is actually the right kind of trip that I should be going on? W- what kind of wisdom would you give to people if they want to go on a trip but they just don't know who to turn to or what kind of organization or you know that kind of thing? Um, I think uh, something important is. Um, is is this uh, an existing relationship mm. thing or is it yeah, more um, a one-off, um, even if it's like a totally different team, if it's not, um, like when I went to Kenya, the guy we went with, his name was Andy, mm. and he goes every single year, mm. maybe sometimes two, three, four times a year. Wow. And so he had all these existing relationships of like, he's checking, he's like, hey, the money we gave you last time, what did you do with it? Um, or, hey, how's this person doing? Mm. Uh, let's go see, oh, we need to go see this person because mm. they're such a close friend of mine. 
And so I, I would always encourage if, if it's something that is a continued relationship, because yep. I think if everyone's going, that's brand new. I mean, obviously you have to start somewhere sometimes, yeah, yeah. but if everyone's brand new and you're doing, it feels like a, a, it's a, just more of an adventure hmm. and more of a, oh, this is exciting. Like right. let's, this is, let's do it right. instead of like, this is actually something that's beneficial. Right. So I think, I think that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. That's really helpful. Wait, at the church that I used to serve at up in Maple Ridge, there was one missionary in particular Uh, who served in Latvia and it every year he would every couple of years or so he would come back and he would share a little bit about and then we would try and put together a mission strip and that was critical that he would share these are the relationships I have right now these are the schools we're in these are the the kids that I've interacted with I want your help because when you come there's a there's this energy and this fresh liveliness Mm -hmm. to these relationships and kids are just enthralled that people would come over from Canada to come and be a part of this um, and that relation to hear from him and to hear his heart and the genuine um, Christ-like attitude that he has toward his mission was, was to me, the defining char- characteristic of, yeah, I'd be on board with that. I think it's helpful for somebody who maybe is exploring to do something, um, talk to people mm. who've been in the field, talk to people like me or Luke who know organizations who can recommend so that we That's can great. guide yeah. you. Because we know enough between us and other staff that would say, ah, maybe not that place or maybe not that organization for various reasons. Like, don't do it on your own. Mm. Talk to people. Mm. And then also I would say, Luke, you can talk to this too, but vetting the people who go is helpful yes. as well. Yeah, that's yeah. good. So, yeah, no, we have quite the process for our high school hmm. preparation. So maybe just for the sake of, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't heard this. What, what would be the kind of things you're looking for? Yeah, so we have first off a form uh, mm. that they have to fill out yeah. that like talks about like their theological beliefs and um, all that kind of stuff, and then um, we have like a long interview process, cool. um, and seeing like why do they want to come, and mm. sometimes you get being like, but because my friends are going, then you're like, ah, okay, yeah, so <laughs> you're right. you're at the bottom of the barrel on this right. one, um, but sometimes we do take those people because we're like, I know you had wrong intentions, mm. but we're gonna intend for this to be good for you, yeah. 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 Kind of like God and Joseph, you know, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> totally. Um, okay. So, so sometimes we present the idea of a missions trip and, uh, all sorts of people jump out and say, yeah, I want to be on board. I want to be on board. And then there are other people, um, who maybe sit there and they listen and they're like, you know, that sounds really great. Sounds like fun. It actually sounds really cool. Like what you're going to do over there. I just don't, I don't think I would be good at it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to share the gospel or I don't have any practical skills or all those kind of things. Sometimes we put these barriers up and say, I'm yeah. not qualified. I'm not whatever. Um, what kind of advice would you give to that person who's maybe listening and thinking, oh, man, this sounds amazing. It's just not, I'm not, I'm not good at it. I wouldn't be good at it. Um, what kind of encouragement would you give to somebody like that? I would say that there, are, we pigeonhole what missions is as one particular mm. thing that I need to go and be an evangelist now. Right, right. But oftentimes a team has many different dynamics of duties. And I would encourage them to go and try it out because, again, like I said before, this is an opportunity to maybe see what your gifts are. Um, But maybe you are the kind of person who's better at the the behind-the-scenes type of stuff. And there would be duties. Somebody needs help with collecting all the receipts Mm, or the logistics, all the the behind-the-scenes. And so... Let's not throw it all away just because you feel you're not the outspoken person who's totally. just so free to talk totally. to people. And have you have you ever been, like for both of you, as you've led teams, had teams, have you ever been in the situation where somebody shows up and they say, I don't really know what to do. And for the whole week that they're there, there's nothing for them to do. Has that ever been your experience? Or is there always something? There's always something. Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's like you said, collecting receipts, like uh, there's a way to serve yeah. that doesn't require incredible giftedness. Uh, well, and yet I, you begin to discover that yeah. as you go, all of a sudden, maybe there are gifts that you never even knew you had. And as the, the one who's receiving or the team leader, hopefully yeah. they're helping to discern all the things that mm. could take place mm-hmm. there. Right. Not just one yeah. thing. I think this is I think this is an important thing is that we think we have to operate within our giftedness. Mm. Like I have these certain gifts right. and I right. have to I That's have my box. to use them. True. Yeah. And if we don't use them it's like then I'm not I'm not I'm out. Right. We live in this world where you have to be like the best or like at the top tier of something in order for you to be useful. Mm. That's true. And I think it's just it's a backwards way of looking like like God can only use the ones who are good at communicating right. to bring about salvation yeah. through the yeah. spoken word. I'm like, 
well, that's such a small view of God. Totally. God can use someone who is terrible at speaking and woo a person to themselves. Like the spirit of God is the one who does that. Yeah. And so when people say like, I, I just don't, I just don't think I can go or mm. I, I don't think I'm equipped enough. And it's like, well, who's in you? Like yeah. the spirit, mm-hmm. the yeah. same spirit that was in Paul, Jesus, you know, you yeah. know of him, like he's in you. Yeah. He, he will use you. He can use you. You, you are not like he, he can use a rock if he wants to. He's used a donkey, mm. right? Totally. Like right. he can, he can use you. Um, and so I think it's, it's just, I think we can, we don't mean it, but what we're saying is like, I, God's just not like, get, like good enough to use me. Mm. Yeah. He mm-hmm. can't. Yeah. Like. I'm, I'm a living example of that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm like, I'm the shy person. I never sp- like spoke to people in high school. I'm not the kind who will just go and start evangelizing. And yet here I am, missions pastor. So wow. I'm just That's it, amazing. like, it's, yeah. Yeah. So maybe let's bring it, let's bring this home. So there's mm. some there. I hope that uh, for you listeners, I hope that that gives a really good overview as to why short term missions actually can be a really helpful thing, both for the people we're going to serve and for your own faith is stepping out, mm-hmm. out of your comfort and, and embracing the fact that you might not have the giftedness you want, but all of a sudden you get over there and God uses you because that's what he does. Yep. Um, so that that hopefully gives a bit of a, a framework there. But let's bring this home to kind of the pushback to the original question. Why do we support missionaries and send mission trips um, over uh, when we have people here in mm-hmm. our own neighborhoods, um, in our own communities who don't know Christ? And really the, the question that... the starting point for all of this is whether or not we as Christian people have a real heart Mm -hmm. for the people in our neighborhoods and around the world to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. That that's what it all comes down to. And then all of these things becomes, uh, become means to an end in a sense, right? We're, we're not doing short-term missions for the sake of doing it because we feel good. We've done something. We're doing it because we want people to hear about Christ. Mm -hmm. So how can, how can we, maybe I'll just ask you guys uh, as leaders in our church, uh, as pastors in our church, how, how would you encourage our people to develop within themselves a real heart for evangelism, mm-hmm. a real heart for sharing the good news, whether it be with their neighborhood um, or if it would be overseas or anywhere else or in the world, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I would think one way would be to just get involved and serve um, in our community. Sometimes that's hard to do, but it can be something as simple as helping your neighbor, neighbor um, like, something outside the garden or shoveling, you know, just being a help. Mm. That's the very first little thing you could do, right? right? right. But then there's things you can do in the broader community that you just volunteer and start to get to know Mm. other people within the community, what's happening in the larger community. You get to see the demographics of poverty, of um, people who are hungry, people who are not in the same situation Mm. as you. And hopefully as a believer and the Holy Spirit living in you and you growing and learning God's word, now your love for God is also becoming evident in your love for people Mm. as well Mm -hmm. through those acts of service, through Mm. doing that. Maybe the community is scary and you don't want to start there. Serve in the church, like be practical and do boots on the ground within the church and there's other things we can do in the church. Maybe you don't want to do something specific in the congregation, but in the summer there's opportunities. Like, for example, if you were to help in the soccer camp that we mm. do every summer, yeah. you're interacting with kids in the community and you're starting, it's just starting. That starts to get the ball rolling for you mm. to serve in different ways. Mm. That's great. Yeah. I'd say like twofold of it, it. It's looking and admiring and seeing who Jesus is the closer we grow with Christ, the, the more we will look like him yeah. mm. and the more his heart will rub off on ours and the more we will be changed. It's the starting point, right? Right. Like yeah. we have to look at Christ, like mm. the one who our hearts adore. And the more we adore Christ, the more we will adore people. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, you, like it's just, it's so plain in scripture. And you see Christ like looking at people and just has compassion on the crowds. Mm. And if we look at the crowds of people who are non-Christians and don't have compassion on them, mm. then, then we need to look closer at who Jesus is and get to know him. And mm. our personal relationship with him needs to grow. And we need to be enamored by him and how good he is and how he He changes everything. Mm-hmm. And so we, we our first and foremost thing is, is yeah. cling to him, yeah. right? We, we, we cling to Jesus and we see uh, the brilliance of 
how he changes our lives and changes everything. Mm. Mm. And then it, it, it's with that love and it's, it's Christ, like change my heart. Mm-hmm. Like I, I see who you are and change my heart so that I love people so that I have the, this deep, deep burden for them. Mm. Uh, I, I've started just praying for, um, not just started, but like I've been praying for my non-believing friends. Mm. And sometimes I'm just sitting there just like, I, I just feel it, mm. you know, and I'm just like, God, like, can you please just work in their lives and mm. just open their eyes? And so we need to look at like, who are the people around us that just don't know him? Mm. Like start praying for them. And the Luke, m- when you do that, your love for them grows. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. The more you pray for someone, the more, I, I don't know how it works, but yeah. the Lord uses that mm-hmm. to shape our hearts totally. and to change us, to just love them even more and to care even more for them. So yeah. it's like, just think about them and pray about them and the Lord will change your heart so that you are more compassionate, yeah. more mm-hmm. kind yeah. towards them in, 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 in re- trying to reveal who Christ is to them mm. and being a, a tool for the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, Pastor Mark has encouraged us this year with those five by yeah. five by five mm-hmm. prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Five, five people, five minutes a day, five days a week, pray mm-hmm. for them. Um, we did something at the young adult ministry I led up in Maple Ridge, something really similar. We had three people, you pick three people. We're going to pray for them every week. And mm-hmm. we talk about them as we got met Sunday nights. And I was shocked as we started to do that, mm. how week after week, all of a sudden somebody would start to share and say, I actually had a conversation with him about the gospel mm. the other day. Yeah, so good. And it was just amazing to see that the the prayer for those people almost initiated in our hearts this sense that next time we see them, you're like, huh, mm. I, you know, all the, your, your heart is for them in a different way. You think about them a different way because you've been praying for them. Uh, and it's just amazing how God does that. Mm-hmm. But I think you said something really, really, really important there, Luke, um, that it has to begin with with Christ. Yeah. Um, if if we sit here and you might be thinking to yourself, well, I want to have an evangelistic heart. I want to have an evangelistic heart. Um, what you can't do is muster up within yourself <laughs> an evangelistic heart. No. You don't have that kind of power over no. your heart, right? Uh, our hearts are sinful. We're prone to yeah. wander and do things we don't want. We shouldn't want to do all those different things. It, we can't just build up the strength to say, okay, I'm going to love people. You can't. In and so fact, our that... hearts will talk us out of it. Right. right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And so how does that actually happen? How mm-hmm. has the word of God told us that our hearts transform? Well, I think 2 Corinthians 3.18 is probably mm-hmm. the best verse for this in the New Testament, mm-hmm. where Paul says that with unveiled face, we behold the glory of God mm-hmm. and are being transformed from one degree of glory to the other. That how is it that my heart's transformed? How am I changed? It's by beholding the glory of God. And the glory of God is something so much more than just God's great. God's great. Mm -hmm. Sing praises to him. It's the glory of God is the radiance of all his perfection. Mm -hmm. It's his goodness, his compassion, his mercy, his kindness. And so when you look at Jesus and you see the glory of God in Jesus expressed through his death on the cross, all of a sudden you begin to realize the God that I know, the God that I was created to image, Genesis 1, is a God of radiant kindness and goodness and compassion and mercy and grace. The more you stare at that, the more you embrace that and enjoy that, Mm. the more your heart transforms. God works in you by his spirit to suddenly set your heart ablaze for people that you never would have thought you'd loved. Right. Um, And I think, I I think sometimes uh, we pigeonhole when we're talking about evangelism and our evangelism heart, we we pigeonhole ourselves into thinking, okay, this means I have to go onto the street with a sign that says Jesus loves you and hope that I have a conversation with somebody and tell them about Christ. We, that's, that's our picture. But Dolly, your point was so good. Go into your community and just do something. Mm -hmm. Be kind because what is the glory of God? It's his goodness, his kindness, his radiant uh, mercy, all these things. So when you go out and you're kind and good and all you're shining forth, like God, like Jesus said, you're the light of the world, mm-hmm. shine forth yeah. that light into the world. Uh, and by your good works, some will see yeah. and glorify your father yeah. in heaven, it says in first Peter. So uh, don't just think of my going into the world as I need to tell people about mm-hmm. Jesus, mm-hmm. That's the, it, but it's shine forth the glory of God, his goodness, mm-hmm. everything that's about him. And then where the opportunities arise yeah. and press yourself yeah. into those places share the good news of yeah. Jesus. Right. Yeah. And I think just to like, like I, I'd have many conversations with high school kids. Mm-hmm. Why don't, why don't we share our faith? Yeah. And I think one of them it comes down to is that we just don't think he can. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's and a good comment. one of the, one of the things is that uh, like, look at your heart and see how, uh, Jesus has transformed you. Yeah. You're not worse or better than anyone else. 
he, if he can change you, he can change yeah, someone else. It's a good yeah. reminder. And so this is what I, like the power of testimony is like just sharing your story with mm. people of how Christ changed your life. Like he can do that in the same as your friends, your family, anyone in this world. We're not better than anyone. Mm. Um, Christ will work. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. So uh, this has been a really great conversation. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions as you're listening and things are coming to mind, maybe you have had experiences or you're wondering about a particular place or, or organization, anything that has come to your mind, or if it's a question totally unrelated to what we talked <laughs> about today, we want to hear from you. So mm-hmm. send us an email at podcast at northview.org or uh, send an email to Luke or Dolly. They would both love to hear from you and carry on a conversation if you have uh, any questions particularly for them. Uh, but I'd love to say, Dolly, Luke, it's been great talking with you. Thanks for being here. I um, hope to have you guys on again sometime in the future. Wow. Thanks for having us. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening. Make sure to subscribe to catch all of our upcoming episodes. Join us next time as we discuss some more sticky questions.